There are names in science that everyone knows. Einstein, Tesla, Darwin, Curie. But the man credited with saving a billion lives? Most people wouldn't even recognize the name of. Science has moved on, and now his revolution might need its own upgrade. Did Norman Borlaug actually save more people than anyone else on the planet? And if so, why does no one know this guy's name? Or if they do, they kind of hate the guy. Take a look at this graph. At the beginning half of the 20th century, Mexico, Pakistan, and India were in extreme poverty and importing most of their wheat. But then all three countries experienced a huge swing in wheat production and started to be able to sustain themselves. And it's all thanks to this farm boy from Iowa named Norman Borlaug. When Borlaug was old enough to attend college in the 1930s, America was in the midst of the Great Depression. And this was the first time that many Americans saw what true hunger looks like. Eager to combat food insecurity after graduation, Norman went down to Mexico to research wheat. At the time, many farmers were poverty stricken because wheat crops were failing big time. Droughts hindered the wheat from growing and stem rust fungus quickly destroyed the few crops that did come up. And after three years of trial and error marrying different wheat crops together, Borlaug's team finally found this new breed of crop that was drought and fungus resistant. But their celebration was short-lived. They quickly realized that this new breed of wheat was way too top-heavy and the stalks often fell over and died. So Borlaug started crossbreeding the native wheat with the genes of a shorter Japanese variety. Eventually, they came up with this new breed of dwarf wheat that had a shorter, thicker stem and could support more grains on top of the stock. Which for Borlaug, this was huge because it not only meant that these countries could now provide for themselves, but it also meant that they could use less land to do so. Hence, the Green Revolution began. In theory, the introduction of the dwarf wheat variety meant reduced rates of deforestation. But that's not how humanity likes to work. Farmers all around the world kept pushing the boundaries for how much land we could use to grow food, which is why today 40% of all habitable land on the planet is used for farming. But that's not the only reason why some critics of Borlaug think that he did more harm than good. The pest and drought resistant breeds of wheat that Borlaug created were highly dependent on different fertilizers and required a ton of water input in order to grow, which for some areas of the world, if they're experiencing drought, they can't necessarily rely on having a ton of water access all the time. And chemical fertilizers cost a lot of money. And even if they did have these fertilizers, back in the 1950s, the use of putting these chemicals on land wasn't considered a Big deal. Today, our egg system in America uses several chemicals that are linked to both health and environmental risks, including some that are potential carcinogens. And in an era where 70% of all fresh water on the planet is dumped on farmland, having crops that suddenly require even more water isn't looking great for the future of our reservoirs. So where does that leave us all today? While these dwarf varieties of wheat might not technically receive an A-plus in their environmental health class, there are way more foods that are more deserving of environmentalist beef than this wheat variety. The truth is, Norman Borlaug saved countless lives because he gave many countries around the world a fighting chance to restore their local food systems. More people should know this guy's name. But science doesn't stand still. Borlaug's work might have fed us back then, but what saved us in the past isn't the same technology as what's going to save us in the future. And with about 2.3 billion people still food insecure today, maybe the real legacy of the Green Revolution isn't just about growing more food, but about growing it smarter. If you care about where food and our future are heading next, make sure to subscribe and follow along for more, because there's a whole lot more content for us to uncover.